everybody, my name is Zellferns and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Today we got another SCP Foundation video to react to, and I'm going to be reacting to it from the rubber. I haven't reacted to any of the rubber stuff in a long time, I know that for sure. Because I've watched the majority of the videos that came out after um, SCP-610 videos that came out two months ago. I haven't, I haven't reacted to any of those other videos since, but I'm going to react to the ones that came out within the last three weeks. And we're going to be reacting to SCP-457 Burning Man. Haven't heard anything about this SCP before, so this one's entirely new to me. And I don't know what to say from here, so we're going to go ahead and get right into it in three, two, one, go. Viewer <clears throat> discretion is advised. That too. Champion Viewer discretion. Barry, send out Executor. Enemy Executor, you stop. Return, Sherman. Go, Johnny. What? Hello, everybody. I'm the Rubber. Today, we, we bring you huh. SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-457. Is it a Pokemon? SCP-457, also why known a as the Burning reference? Man, is a sentient flame that can transition into the physical form of a male human. However, okay. its actual composition is still unknown. Thus, it has proven to be invisible and undetectable by any known means. 457's most rudimentary form appears to be that of a single flame, nice touch with comparable the in torch. size, <laughs> one ignited by a match. Oh, no, it's just a match. Never mind. In this form, four, five, I've, seven. I've been playing way too much Minecraft this month. I've been playing way too much. So <laughs> you guys will find out in the next video. Me and Mitchell record how much I've done. And possesses you only the simplest <clears throat> of directives and seems relatively uh -huh. harmless and ordinary when compared to any other flame. Wait, so it doesn't. However, it does possess a penchant for suddenly flickering to burn human hands, along with the ability to jump to more flammable <laughs> materials or other flames. Hmm. When this happens, it absorbs these additional flames and incorporates them into its final form. As SCP 457 grows larger, it is able to form more complex shapes. Its intelligence grows with its size and fuel source. So the bigger it gets, the more intelligent it becomes. I'm going to be pausing this video a lot, guys, because I'm going to do my own theories on this SCP as well. This 457 has been observed attempting to <coughs> communicate by creating letters out of its own flames, charring them into the wall or other surfaces. More rarely, it attempts to communicate through speech that is seemingly created via high pressure, superheated air, and the crackling and pops of flames. Once 457 reaches an unknown <coughs> threshold of size and fuel source, 457 splits into two beings, and so on, and so forth. However, multiple so beings... <laughs> Sorry, I, that just threw off my complete train of thought. If nobody understands it's me, this meme, it's a Spider-Man reference. I've seen the Spider-Man reference a ton of times, so I understand this meme. But what I was going to say is that no matter how, if it gets too big, it tends to split off into other sections and it continues to be endless, right? As far as that's what I got from that. The 457 <coughs> are aggressive towards each other. Oh, so they're hostile towards each other. And will either attempt to consume or extinguish their doubles, especially if there is only a limited amount of fuel at hand. SCP 457's behavior <coughs> is always predictable as its goals are simply to acquire larger sources of fuel that it can use to spread its flame. Hmm. The danger of 457 comes from its ability to increase its intelligence with its size, along with its apparent ability to learn and mimic behaviors. This has led to its purposeful decision to severely damage much of the sprinkler system and destroy a portion of the fuel injector that had been sustaining its intelligent form giving it free access to several gallons of gasoline. Uh oh It has also attempted to trick or reason with SCP personnel to be released or have access to more fuel. Due to 457's uh -huh. unique composition, variable intelligence, and uncooperative nature, its psychology may not be accurately determined in accordance with any human analogy. So still determinately, it can't... You said... It said... Damn it. Rubber said it can be predictable at times, but due to its uncooperation, it can't be predictable. Sorry, the correct word is unpredictable. Hmm. Below is a tale written by Dexano <clears throat> titled SC Pokemon. God damn Dr. it. Dr. Django Br You guys don't notice, but I actually don't really care for Pokemon. I never really had any intentions to watch it. The only th Pokemon things I'll watch is both the live-action movie and the animated movies, and that's just about it. 
I don't care for watching the show. I just don't. I like it, but at the same time, I don't like it. Bridge <clears throat> was sent out to retrieve SCP-826. Who is SCP-826? Bridge 826? looked at the portal, a door of white light opening to the unknown. He took a deep breath, <sighs> then a long sigh. After several minutes of dread and reflection, he slung on the backpack they gave him and stepped in. Bridge opened his eyes and looked around. A bedroom, a bed in one corner, computer. There is a TV Wait. and Super Nintendo sitting in the middle of the floor. And that's a bit strange. Hmm. Stairs in the corner of the bedroom. He descended the stairs, noticing a woman at a table. Hello? He tapped the woman on the shoulder. She turned and <laughs> smiled. Right, all boys leave home someday. It said so on TV. He dropped the backpack and finally read the mission brief Steve gave him. Dr. Bridge, enclosed is a set of mission-appropriate equipment, a photograph of SCP-826, and a packed lunch. Please retrieve SCP-826 as soon as humanly possible, and do not allow the complete destruction of any of the provided items. If our theories are correct, and if you reach a game over, you will die. Agent Limit. Oh, so this is basically Pokemon, but if you lose, you die. That's... Okay. Inside the bag were six red and white spheres, numbered one through six. My mission is a Pokemon Red Nuzlocke with a hack team. He turned and started off north, sticking a huh. foot into the tall grass <clears throat> that was about knee high. With a flash of light, a Charmander appeared before the bridge. He picked a ball from the backpack, a flash of light, a flash of red, and a huge hulky... Oh, that's interesting. His Pokemons are not actual Pokemons. They're SCPs. ...thing appeared. A spine sailed down its uh, back. What was this SCP? Its mouth it was, filled with enormous nine, glowing red something? teeth. The being was sightless with an eyeless face. I forgot the numbers. An unmoving mouth. And yet, it was laughing with many voices. Welker laughed at Charmander, screaming in four distinct voices. Charmander shivered, then leapt and scratched it across the face. Welker's Intimidate cut enemy Charmander's attack. Charmander's attack fell. Charmander used Scratch. Crunch! Enemy Charmander fainted. Hmm. Three hours later, Bridge was strolling in the Pokemon Center, poking his head in every building, looking in every bookshelf and in every PC. Alas, there was no 826. Entering the gym, he tossed a ball into the pool. Three minutes later, he stepped out, with Bob hopping behind. Three more hours, and Bridge exited Celadon Gym, with Laser Beak gliding close behind. Laser Beak. Then Bridge rode off to Route 19 on Pazuzu's shoulders. Two hours later, Bridge exited the Viridian Gym, with Johnny in tow. The city burned and small cracks were forming in the sky, with Glitchmon leaking through. Fuel. No. Fuel. Johnny, return. Stop whining. We're getting out of here. Finally. Bridge looked up to the huge building before him. Huh. <clears throat> Ten straight hours inside the game. He was tired, hungry, and had to piss. <laughs> the Pokemon League. The Pokemon League. Shut up. Shut up. No, you. No, you. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Okay, that was creepy. Welcome to the Pokemon League. I'm Bruno of the Elite Four shouted a shirtless man sitting in the middle of a room full of rocks. Through rigorous training, people and Pokemon can become stronger without limitations. An onyx burst from the ground. Bridge dropped Sherman's ball. A burst of white light, a rustle of leaves, and a massive pile of kindling crowded his half of the arena. Huh. Sherman, razor leaf, Bridge commanded. <clears throat> Sherman used razor leaf. Wait, aren't it's you? super effective. Okay, never mind. Enemy onyx say. used harden. I was gonna say Enemy aren't, Onyx's defense rope. Aren't Lee, aren't uh, grass type Pokemon too weak against rock types? I was gonna say I don't. Like I said, I don't know too much about Pokemon to understand what's really going on here. So all I know is from the movies, and that's it. German used Razor Leaf. <clears throat> it's super effective. Both the animated and live Enemy action. Enemy Onyx fainted. Elite Four Bruno sent out Hitmonchan. Enemy Hitmonchan used Fire Punch. It's super effective. Sherman, that's enough. Come back. Go, Johnny. Johnny used Inferno. Critical hit. Enemy Hitmonchan fainted. 
Elite 4 Bruno sent out Hitmonlee. Enemy Hitmonlee fainted. Elite 4 Bruno sent out Onyx. It's not very effective. Enemy Onyx fainted. Wait, That's enough. Return Johnny. Johnny knocked out three enemies in a row. Then, Bridge entered the next room and looked around. The room was much bigger on the inside. It was an actual stadium, a coliseum. Hmm. It had an opening that looked up to the night sky, and there was one single figure standing there under the lights. Hey, I was looking forward to seeing you, Django. My rival should be strong to keep me sharp. Champion Gary sent out Pidgeot. Go Laserbeak. Enemy Pidgeot used Wing Attack. It's not very effective. Laserbeak used Steel Wing. Enemy Pidgeot used Wing Attack. It's not very effective. Laserbeak used Steel Wing. Enemy Pidgeot fainted. The birds circled each other, dive smashing each other with their wings. Laserbeak landed one right in Pidgeot's face, shattering its beak and throwing it into the wall. Champion Gary sent out Alakazam. That's enough. Come back, Laserbeak. Go, Pazuzu. Pazuzu Whoa. used Sucker Punch. It's super effective. I didn't notice the D class earlier when it, when this Pazuzu was in the earlier shot. I did not notice the body. It wasn't in frame. Enemy Alakazam fainted. Pazuzu rushed the Alakazam as it readied a psychic attack, running it through with three spear legs and cutting it apart. Champion Gary sent out Rhydon. Return, Pazuzu. Go, Sherman. Enemy Rhydon used Horn Drill, but it failed. Sherman used Frenzy Plant. It's super effective. Enemy Rhydon fainted. Rhydon charged forward, spinning Death Horn shearing through Sherman to no avail. The sticks scattered for a brief moment, thrown by the horn's inertia. They rushed together and smushed the Dino Beast underneath the whole one-ton heap. Champion Gary sent out Executor. Enemy Executor used Stomp. Return, Sherman. Go, Johnny. Johnny used Inferno. It's super effective. Enemy Executor fainted. I don't even feel like I'm watching an SCP video anymore. I feel like I'm just watching a Pokemon episode. Bob lodged itself into the ground, leaving itself open for Executor to stomp it ineffectually. The tree checked its foot, assuming the snail was dead before being completely and instantly incinerated by Johnny's pure raging hunger. Champion Gary sent out Charizard. Hey. Johnny, come back. Charizard Go I know for sure is a real Pokemon. Welker's Intimidate <clears throat> cut enemy Charizard's attack. Enemy Charizard used Fire Blast. Welker was burned. Welker used Thunder Fang. It's super effective. Welker was hurt by its burn. Enemy Charizard used Slash. Critical hit. Welker used Crunch. Enemy Charizard fainted. The Charizard and 939, 939 stared each other down. The dragon was shuddering upon its remembrance of their first battle. Well, rather Welker number. began to sing nursery rhymes as Charizard froze in brief terror. A shudder turned to a growl, and recoil turned to rage. Then, Gary's starter launched a huge five-pointed star of fire at Welker, crashing the red beast like a truck. On fire, the Welker leapt at the dragon, crunching down with a mouthful of lightning. Charizard returned with a slash, hewing a side of flesh right off Welker. The burning demon returned with the predatory bite to crush the skull. Charizard fell. No, that can't be. You beat my best. Bridge returned Welker and turned to leave, snatching up SCP-826 before the in-game script made him hit the the end screen. Dr. Bridge stepped out of the doorway, holding a belt of SC Pokeballs and the bookends. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks. All right, that, I share my life. that one was a bit more confusing than I was actually expecting to be. I was not expecting a Pokemon reference. I should have expected a Pokemon reference by looking at the, the thumbnail of the video, but I didn't. But uh, I don't know what I was. Ex I don't know what I was expecting. But um, I guess I know what SCP four. I guess I know what SCP-456... What is... Whoa! Okay, I just restarted my webcam. Something happened with my webcam. I don't know what happened. That was odd. 
It was very odd. I've never had that problem before with my webcam before, so that... That was odd. I'm glad I noticed it right before the recording got even worse. I checked the footage, too, just now as well. It only began happening at the last eight seconds. That was new. I gotta keep an eye out for that now. I don't know. My webcam just started glitching out, so I unplugged it and plugged it back in. See if that, uh... See if that fixed it, and it seems like it worked. I hope, because I got a lot of well, I got a lot of videos to record today. But hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm gonna end end this quickly and see if there's anything else I need to fix about my webcam. But hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. Like, subscribe, all this stuff, guys, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.